ability to take something away from Tua. He's been great this year. We know what he's capable of. But this Bills team in the recent past seems to have a blueprint for this guy. What is it and why does it work so well against him? They have played well against him and they started in week four when they played earlier this season and really kind of had a dominating performance against Tua. It was the only game this season when he didn't have a completion 20 yards downfield. For Mike McDaniel and Tua, can you adjust? Yeah. And this is a trend that we've seen since that week four game. Everything that's not the up to play, not the tight end behind him, and throw the ball to the end, run the ball. You've got to get him out of this. And again, today, I promise you, the Bills are going to be in that majority of the day. They're not going to let tight ends behind him. Deep high safety, look for it, and the Dolphins adjust. Yeah, I mean, they're going to stick with what works. We see today if Tua and the Dolphins can adjust on offense. Part of the blueprint always for dealing with a good quarterback is a great pass rush, and we have yeah. that today in the Cowboys Commanders game. A guy by the name of Micah yeah. Parsons. It feels like a silly question saying this, but why is this guy so good? Yeah, the impact, of course, getting to the quarterback, Sam, and sacking the quarterback is one, but this guy's got a pitch. No. No. One pass rush wins. All right. Get to the quarterback. I thought you were about to do a little belly dance for us there. Got, 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 got excited. <laughs> that was going to be. You mentioned the 13 sacks. Micah Parsons and Reggie White are the only two players in NFL history to have 13 sacks in each of their first three Oh, we're in time for a week 18 edition of You Got Moss. We've got quarterback here. This is going to be the best of the regular season. Bring it today. What do you have for us? Talking about my quarterback being with the hey man. You have to get the mission to school. We're here too. Yep. You got balls, what you think? That's about as good as it gets right there. Very good. And I'm glad you brought up Washington and Michigan because we're going to talk about here. We have a little announcement of our own. It is my absolute favorite thing. Here we go. Saints head coach, we're going to say leaning in. The Saints think that they have a 
good thing going here. They'd like to keep it going. Now, what happens today if the Saints come out, play a terrible game at the end, some decisions. It sounds like there's going to be some change on the coaching staff. It doesn't sound like it will involve Dennis Allen. We'll move on to Chicago and Matt Eberflus. We're leaning in right now, despite the fact that there was speculation earlier in the year. Okay, so how about some of these coaches? A little more surprising to yeah. see on the list. Up in the air. Now, I'm going to say leaning safe out of respect to the type of coach that Mike Brady has been and all that he's accomplished. But I can tell you that this situation is unsettled. There is no solution. And there are going to be organizational meetings at some point. Maybe there's been speculation that he could be traded away. Obviously, we know the ties to New England in the past. We'll say leaning safe, but his future is very much in question. We'll move on to another guy right now that there's been some speculation about. Mike Tomlin. People of Pittsburgh want him fired. They're not firing Mike Tomlin. But here's the thing that's interesting. He's got a year left on his contract. And there are some people around the league who believe that Mike Tomlin could decide eventually to take some time off. Like Sean Payton did. Maybe take a year off. We'll see if that's something that's on his mind. We're leaning safe. But Mike Tomlin gets to dictate what happens here. Not the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're not firing him. He's staying on. But he's staying on if he wants to. If he decides that he'd like to walk, well, that's a different subject. And maybe there's a team out there. He's from Washington. His wife loves Los Angeles. Maybe one of them wants to lob a call into the Steelers to see if they could wind up doing You've something got with wife and, and the other one, and there are a couple other ones. Off. Mike McCarthy, the Dallas Cowboys head coach, is in a situation right now where many people have said that his future will be determined by how Dallas's last game of the season goes. Pete Carroll in Seattle. There's a question every year about whether it's going to be his last year. One of these years, it's going to be his last year. So we wait to see about Pete Carroll's look. The bottom line, Sam, and that's why we dedicated it to more. There's so much speculation, so much that's going to happen. Some people are going to be safe, a lot of people are going to be out, and we're going to see all that happens here in the days to come. So more hated. What more hated. Hate. Labeling Fight. people safe okay. or out. Richard King Pickett today saying, kind of correcting some rumors that he didn't want to suit up if he wasn't the starter. He said, I'm in for being I'll be the number two quarterback. Right, a great teammate there. Do you like this decision in Pittsburgh, Dan? I do, and I think it's because. Yeah, we can't deny it. All right, we're just getting started here on NFL Live. So Yeah. I know, that's a good deal. All right, let's go to Buffalo, where the Bills kept their playoff 
points alive with the win over the Patriots, but it wasn't pretty as Josh Allen completed only 50% of his passes. That continued a trend for Allen over his last seven games. Allen has completed 57% of his passes, the second worst mark in the NFL ahead of only Bryce Young. So, Mark, is he concerned about Allen and the Bills passing game? I mean... the pros now with the regular season finale against the Jets approaching many are wondering if this might be Bill Belichick's final game as head coach of the New England Patriots the Pats 4 and 12 they're in the midst of their worst season in three decades while no decision about his future appears to have been officially made yet Belichick staying focused on this week's task at hand I can say it. So, Happy New Year, Happy everyone. New Year. I had the very latest on a house fire at Tyreek Hill's home. Thankfully, everyone oh, is man, safe. For sure. And Lewis Riddick is going to answer which player is under the most pressure in the Bills Dolphins game. We'll get to that in just a minute. But, Kevo, mm -hmm. Alex Lewis Riddick would come back and we tell no lies. Okay. ACE Showdown on Sunday night. Biggest matchup of the week. But who, particular player, is under the most pressure? play outside of himself at times if they wanted to end the way they wanted to end down there, which is with the win in the division title. He would also be a chance to exercise some demons for Tua against Buffalo. He has a 1-5 record against them. He's got as many interceptions as touchdown and a sub-50 QBR. Okay, so lots of big games, though. So when you look at the other 15 games that are happening this week, give me another player you think is facing the most pressure. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned, I mean, they started off the season 8-3. It looked like they were cakewalking through a division that had a rookie and had lost. Yeah. You know, they used to talk about a Colts team that had Gardner Minshew. Jacksonville would clinch back-to-back -back division titles if they get a win, something that they haven't done since 1999. We'll certainly see Louis Riddick joining us here with all his insight. Sportscenter PTI is going to come back in just a minute. We have finally reached it, the regular season finale in the NFL. They're going to give you their best storylines for Week 18. The Bills can win the division or go home. We'll get into that, too. And in the NFC, the Bucks and the Packers ready to punch their tickets to the postseason after losing legends. But first, the biggest game in college football is... ...would like to win the division, but there's some wiggle room for there. There's room for error because... Unlike the Bills, they can afford to lose this game. They've already clinched a playoff spot. Buffalo, though, they'd either be locked into the T seed, two seed with a win, or they would be eliminated from the playoffs altogether, right? Okay, so they're the two seed if they beat Miami on Sunday. But if they end up losing, this is the scenario that could play out that would see them eliminated altogether. So the winner of the Texans and Colts is a lock to make the playoffs, and we'll give it to Houston in this instance because they are a slight road favorite. A Texans win coupled with a Steelers win over a Ravens team that's going to be resting absolutely everybody. And then if the Jags do what they're expected to do in Nashville, win the division and beat Nashville, you see the Bills completely left out of the playoffs, something that would seem unfathomable at the beginning of this season. For much more, here's our Bills reporter, Elena Getzenberg. It's a pretty remarkable story because there were times between 2018 and 2021 that Michael Penix Jr. would lay on the floor of his dorm room and cry. Four seasons, four straight season ending injuries. He wasn't in a good place, but he knew he loved the game of football and he knew he still wanted to play. So Penix, a Florida kid who spent the first few years of his college career in Bloomington, Indiana, went about as far west and north as he could possibly go in an effort to find what he calls different headspace. What he ended up with in Washington is now a chance to play for the national championship. Here's Jen Latta. 
We're going to spend some time with Aaron Dolan. We're doling out winners with our sports betting expert here. 14 games on the slate today in the NFL, but it's week 18. So why should we be approaching week 18 differently than other weeks? Like you mentioned, it is quarter first half bets. Maybe look at some player incentives if you're going to attack the player prop market or look at games where there is something on the line, such as, you know, Dolphins Bills. That's what we want to get to because that is the headliner. It's Buffalo at Miami. The division's on the line. How are you playing that one? So I like the Bills to win outright, but they're waiting. As for Josh Allen, he's had 15 rushing touchdowns. He's had one in at least the last five games. Tua, he threw a pick against his team earlier in the season. And in that four game stretch that I mentioned to the Bills, three quarterbacks have thrown a total of four picks. So I do like that little same game parlay if you want to slice it a little bit differently today. Plus, plus 291, as you said, Josh Allen continues to run the football under new offensive coordinator Joe Brady. That's Aaron Dolan making us smarter, making us a little money on Sports Center AM. A Pyrrhic victory, of course, for the Steelers. Senior NFL insider Adam Schefter with us. So what do we know about T.J. Watt? The Steelers would have to play in a week should they make the playoffs. Well, Hannah, the defensive player of the year candidate, somebody who's very determined to be out there at all costs. We'll see. Uh, they need the Bills or the Jaguars to lose. And somebody else who is determined to be out there today who's been pushing to play yeah. Is Trevor Lawrence, but he's had limited availability. I know he's been able to throw more and more and practice this week, but what is his status for this? That he's been activated, right, uh, from IR. So that's good news. Zay Jones also questionable. Uh, but this is this is a, a game that should be all hands on deck. Absolutely. Adam and a lot of riding on it for the Titans, too. Oh, yeah. for oh, the Yeah, well, that's a whole other story. We'll yes. probably get into more on that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Weather could be a big factor today. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute, but we are back here with Adam Schefter. Um, obviously, there's there's a lot of questions. We were just saying, who knows if Mike Vrabel is going to be the coach of the Titans next year. There's a lot of things that will come to light tomorrow, but we've already been talking about this for weeks now, and that's the future of Bill Belichick. So uh, what do we know at this point? Uh, what will take place after the Jets yeah. game today? Well, I think there are two significant questions. Tomorrow... How does that conversation go? Does Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick, did they just decide to mutually split mm -hmm. where he's allowed to then go get Don Shula, by the way, for the most all-time victories? I'm just part of the equation. Or part of it. does Robert Kraft say you have a year left on your contract? Oh, okay. And now I want compensation. Correct. Bill Belichick. Well, you can't for trade the... him per se. Right. But you can ask for compensation, compensation. from other teams. Right. So does, does he decide to, number one, uh, let him go? Sure. Like you're just going to get... Well, maybe we will get immediate clarity, mm -hmm. but there are layers to this that are beyond just a simple meeting and whether or not he's back. How does that play out mm. becomes a fascinating question here if that is the direction that both men go. Now, maybe they get together and they figure out a way to make mm. this work and stay together. That doesn't seem to be the opinion of most people around the league, Right. but there's a lot of history, a lot of tradition here. Let's see what they decide. But I think we'd be allowed to just go, or do the Patriots help influence that? And maybe it depends on where he goes, what conference, and so. I mean, that's very, very, very interesting. A lot of questions. Um, yeah, to be continued. Uh, Adam, we will see you on Countdown at the top. Of the, this is, this Hannah, is we have some ground to cover in the coming days. Oh, yeah. Oh, in Michigan. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm not even oh, talking okay. to <laughs> <laughs> coaches. Forget about I thought it. you wanted to put your <laughs> shoes in. Season, Jay, it's been so crazy. As Lindsay Theory joins us now from Lambeau Field, where Jordan Love has an opportunity to do something. Neither of his predecessors, Brett Favre didn't do it, Aaron Rodgers didn't do it. Let's get to the playoff in their first season as a starter. What are folks saying there? Uh, Aaron Rodgers was not the worst thing for Love and his development, no. uh, Lindsay Theory, and obviously a big game perhaps for Justin Fields, a showcase game for him. So you saw the weather there behind Lindsay. Certainly there's going to be weather all over the place today in these really, really critical games. So what will be affected? Here's GMA meteorologist Samara Theodore. Now more from Herma Edwards. So the Eagles coming off this loss to the Cardinals. They lose control of the NFC East. They've lost four of five. They were outscored 29 to 10 in the second half of that game. You heard what Jordan Mailata said about getting back to Eagles football, and you played for the Eagles. You know this team as well as anybody. What does that exactly mean? they got to be bullies again, and they got to understand. For the running game, I mean, Jalen Hurst was the RPO king. I mean, what's happened? They got away. They're trying to figure out who they are. It's week 18, you can't figure you out can't who you are You can't change your players. You can't change your players. Okay. Just go back to your mentality of how you played before. All right. No repeat champ in 18 seasons in the NFC East. And likelihood uh, there will not be this year as well. Thanks, Herm.
sports betting analyst Aaron Dolan joining us. Okay, week, week 18 is different than any other weeks, right? When it comes yes, to it betting. is. What, what are some things to look out for? Well, the first thing to look out for is motivation. Who is playing for what? Right. And also, it's not like these guys are going to go out there and dog it. They're still professional players. But at the same time, each game is such a different situation. So, like, Bills, Miami, as things wind down. Okay. One of the biggest games on the slate is Bills versus Dolphins for the AFC East title. Something big on the line in that one. Yes. How would you play this? So we're going to do a same game parlay, and you can bet this right now on ESPN Bet. I like the Bills to win outright. I like Tua to throw a pick, and Josh Allen anytime. Bills will win this game. Tua will throw a pick. Josh Allen anytime touchdown. You get that at plus 295 right now on ESPN Bet. Much more from Aaron coming up on Sunday NFL Countdown at the top of the hour. Aaron, thank you so much. Our game with the Packers facing a hot division rival at home with a postseason berth on the line. Last year, of course, it was the Lions that spoiled their final game in playoff hopes could the Bears do the same today to Jordan Love in his first season as a starter should the Bears get a third straight win with Justin Fields that might make that number one draft pick even more problematic here's Lindsay theory and the biggest favorite of the day is the Dallas Cowboys by 13 points on the road against the commanders Dallas taking that NFC East title and the number two seed with a win of course none of that matters if they continue their postseason disappointment but in this final weekend of the regular season, Dak Prescott looks to punctuate a year in which he dispelled an off-season narrative. Here's Edward.